Hello once again. Welcome to the screencast number three in section two of the Mechanical Systems Unit. Uh, this one's a short one. We're going to take a look at uh, work because we're always saying machines do more work, machines do more work. But what is work? I think the proper word we should have been using this whole time would have been force. Uh, and if I've mixed those up several times, my apologies. Uh, because force is probably a better term, especially when you're getting introduced to physics. But it's okay. I mean, don't get too hung up on it. So what do we mean by the term work in science? And I'm going to be very picky on this one. Okay. So what is work? In Greek mythology, Atlas, this guy is Atlas here, held the world on his shoulders. That was his job. That's all he did on this pedestal. He held the world. And if Atlas moved, we had earthquakes, right? Um, as Atlas shifted, you might have had uh, different seasons or you might have had different... Um, times of day, right? And of course we know that to be mythology. There's no uh, guy holding planet Earth and everyone always asks, well how does he hold it? If, wouldn't his hand go right into the water? Okay, get past all that, right? Get past the fact that this guy was modeled after me. I know it's hard to believe, but that that is a painting of me uh, f three years ago. And forget the fact that there's dragons in that photo. Okay. Is Atlas doing work? Is he working? Yes? No? Is Atlas doing work? Let me come up with some other examples here. Which of these images show work? Is the guy on the left who is carrying those big huge blocks of wood attached together? Is the baseball player who swings to hit the ball at 110 miles per hour, is he doing work? Is the snow plow doing work? Not the driver, the snow plow. Is the snow plow doing work? And lastly, the woman on the right, leaning up against the wall, probably doing some stretches. Is she doing work? Sometimes definitions in science can be different than what you think in your head. And we need to be very clear on this together. In the scientific sense, so when you come into science class and we're talking about it in science, uh, when we're talking about work, work is done when any force acts upon an object to make the object move. Okay, highlight, star, underline. Make the object move. Movement must occur before you can say that work has been or is being done. Okay, so what am I saying here? If it's not moving, you're not working. No movie, no worky. Okay, if the object is not being moved, work is not being done in the scientific sense. Is work being done here? in that heap of mud, that car trapped in the mud? Are those men doing work if they push on it? No, they are not moving the car. The car is not being moved. Therefore, work is not being done. Okay. Now we can calculate work. Work is force, which is Newton's, times distance. That's how we calculate it, force times distance. And the answer comes out in something called joules. Uh, we just capitalize it as a J. Joules, that's work. Okay. So here's an example. If you lifted a chair onto a desk or table, how much work would you do if you exerted a force of 50 newtons and the chair was lifted 0.4 meters? Okay. So you punch in the formula. Work is force times distance. The force here, clearly 50 newtons. And the distance that the chair is being uh, moved is 0.4 meters. Well, it's always in meters. If it's in centimeters, you're going to have to convert it back. So we have 50 newtons times the 0.4 meters gives us 20. 20 joules worth of work is being exerted on this chair. Back to the original question then. Is Atlas doing any work? If he's holding the globe, he's holding the earth, never moving, is he doing work? In the scientific sense, we would say that no, he is not doing any work because he's not moving. Okay, Very simple concept, work, it's force times distance, and the answer is in joules. In order for work to be done, the object has to be moved when you apply a force. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy.